G'day viewers, my name is Michael and welcome to this special tutorial edition of Single Racer. And now I want to say up front that this tutorial is probably or arguably mainly for beginners or those people maybe like the channel Magic that were originally console players and decided to take uh, <laughs> what some people consider the next level up to PC and have bought a wheel and pedals and um, you know might be struggling with how to put laps together or, or just uh, trying to improve as a sim racer. It might even help uh, people who still like to use controllers on the PC. Uh, there's some outstanding uh, drivers out there that uh, still use controllers, so it could be of benefit to them too. Okay, so the main reason for this tutorial is based around something I've been saying maybe more so for the last month or two, and that is that to me, sim racing is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. And arguably your skill level could determine how much of that puzzle is built so you could be uh, a 10 percent total raw beginner and still trying to learn the craft or you could be uh, arguably like me and be it you know 90 percent where you feel you know most things pretty well and are just looking for those bits and pieces but it's actually those bits and pieces that i want to feature in this video and now I say that because I feel that although I've been racing for 28 years and you know I base that always around the fact that the first game that I ever remember playing was a game called Stunts in 1990. But I would say I've done more improvement in this last year since starting my channel than I have in all those previous you know, 25 to 27 years uh, if you're talking about incremental steps. And so I feel personally that the reason for that is because I might have been, say, you know, as low as 50%, anywhere in that from 50% upwards, where I was missing those pieces. And I discovered that YouTube is an outstanding way through the different channels to find those missing pieces. And so what I want to do in this video is actually show you in a in a in a a visual form how I've taken three of those puzzle pieces and then essentially added them to the the big bigger puzzle meaning putting them all together and how it helped me do a hot lap on a track that I'd never done before but specifically based on grabbing those pieces from other channels and putting them all together. And so in this video, I'm going to cover three specific pieces of information as a guide to how all these other channels can help you, especially uh, beginners, just get information from different channels. Because the thing about the puzzle is it's got to be your puzzle so you can take advice from other people but if it doesn't suit your driving style or things like that where you don't feel it helps you you can just throw them out that's the great thing about following so many channels and now let me specifically cover off these three pieces or you know if you think of them as puzzle pieces or bits of information that I've actually joined together literally like a puzzle piece and it helped me get a top 10 hot lap on this track that I've just downloaded and never raced before. And so the first tip actually came just recently from me entering a tournament by Sim Racing 604 and came from the winner of that tournament, Marco Pedic, is his channel here. And in the last round of the tournament, I was struggling a bit with that track. The car I knew really well, but I just had never raced that particular track before. And he posted in on Sim Racing 604's website this bit of information here, where he talked about slowing down and advising me personally because I was doing that, but essentially his advice was for everyone in the competition to not go down to second gear and use third gear. In other words, kind of like to take your time. Now that's a bit of a misnomer because 
by slowing down and taking your time doesn't mean you're actually driving slower, you're actually driving faster. But you're not pushing, and I'll give you an, a, a visual example of what I'm talking about. Now the second bit of advice comes from the extra mile. And although I had already known that advice myself, that was one of the puzzle pieces that I'd, I'd learnt much earlier, it was still great to watch. You know, I watch for anything that he might add to uh, my lack of knowledge and um, or just reinforce what could be good and what could be bad. And here's the video here. We talked about how you learn a new track and use the tracks objects you know just things around the track as a guide to where you start to learn to break to become faster and again i'll use a visual example both how not to do it and then how i got my top 10 rsr time and the third bit of advice i admit is maybe nothing special but it follows on from a, a video that i previously did here where i talked about using the ghost car. Now the ghost car to me, uh, at least personally, is the most uh, or the best way to me to learn the track because of my experience with racing my brother where we would be sitting physically in the same room, he in another chair and he would watch me race not only the, the lap, so do a hot lap on the, the track, but with the ghost car and then he would watch how I would do it, we'd swap over, he'd do it better because he's usually, he's much better at taking corners than I am or, or figuring out the correct angles of corners than I am, I, I've got to take my hat off to him there, but the mistake then he makes is I am watching him do that of course and then I add my slow in fast out because he's a kind of all in the corner and then hang on for dear life kind of driver so he watches how I then approach the lap learning his tricks and vice versa and we get almost always a really hot uh, or record time based on that track and so the ghost car is a big play in that because you can physically see in front of you what you're doing now the reason I want to bring that up in this video is because this is one of the tracks that being so tight where I would argue like a lot of people do when they comment underneath the video that say the ghost car actually gets in the way. So as you're getting down to one hundredth of a second difference between your hot lap where you're getting that good at understanding where to turn and how to take the corners, the ghost car, if it's a, especially if it's a big GT3 vehicle, being like literally like a white ghost can get in the way of your you know your view, visual cues and things like that. So what I'm going to do here is show you how Sidekick's ability to change uh, the diff through the different modes can actually replace a ghost car and be just as helpful. And so finally, the way I figured the best way to do this was because. Sometimes I don't like the fact that although it's, I think it's absolutely fantastic for especially people on a budget that when you buy the Oculus Rift VR headset that it actually comes with a microphone but it is a quite a drop between using a standalone microphone. So rather than use that this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three hot laps. One where I show you the obvious mistakes you might make uh, when first approaching trying to do a hot lap, uh, in other words overdriving. The second one is more just a simple siding lap where I'll talk about the objects and things like that. And then the third one will be an out and out hot lap where I'm trying to beat my current time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record them separately in VR, but uh, or at least one of the one of the, the final hot lap in VR. But I'm going to then talk over the top of it, and it just gives me a better sound um, all round. So hopefully you can hear me better. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time, and let's go hot lapping.
So okay folks, it's going to be blatantly obvious that if you overdrive you crash, but I just want to give the example here where I not only crash because I'm going too fast, but so much of this track, which is the uh, Monaco 66 version of the track, is by me not shaping myself well enough. In other, other words, the right angle to take the corners, and you can get so much speed by understanding that at times how you need to angle the car into the corner or into a whole path into the corner to be so much quicker. So here I'm driving terribly and I'm deliberately overdriving, but I want to show you like in this these two spots here where I'm coming in too hot. See, and I'm sliding so I've got no grip to turn. And again, here for the hairpin as well, I'm pushing myself too much, trying to be too quick. And it's amazing that fight against the brain where you go, well, to be fast, I've got to get push harder, harder. But in this track specifically, I want to show you how at times you don't. Now, here's a couple of points where I'll actually pause this. Um, let, actually, let me go a bit further and I'll pause it again. And here is an example of where if you look at the angle of the car is not only am I going to come into the corner too hot, so deliberately um, lock up and crash again, but the angle is all wrong. So I'm coming here, I see the turn and I've got nowhere to go. So I'm struggling to turn it already because I'm coming in too hot. So again, in this next corner, if we come into the corner, I'm coming in too fast, but there's a, a barrier here in the way, just here like this, see, and I hit the barrier because I've got no space left to pull off the turn if I'm right on the edge. And this last one I want to show you is I brake probably at the right point here, but then I let go of the brake, see? And I come in too hot still again, and because it's that thing of the brain saying, no, 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 I've got to go faster, so I let go of the brake, and then you realize, no, hang on, I should have kept braking, and I'll show you that in the next lap. So now that I've completely ruined that by overdriving, and I've even overdriven the... Uh, the poor uh, pit guy there. Um, let me show you now how I use those three elements of the puzzle to bring it all together, to connect it all up uh, using the sighting lap. So let's move on to that now. Okay folks, so now we're gonna do a sighting lap, but we're gonna add the element of replacing the ghost car because it could get in the way with sidekick. So I'll turn sidekick on now and for those that have never used Sidekick, this is really handy here where you have a best lap and a um, personal best lap. So your best ever time or just the time you're doing currently. And if you're racing, you actually get two others where it's how long to the car in front and how long to the car behind. So as we set off here, I'm gonna use this curved building here as my breaking point. And this is where you use Alex's um, or the extra miles uh, tip or puzzle piece about braking at a certain point, but also coming in at the correct angle. And by coming in at the correct angle for your car into the corner, you'll gain much more speed, which we'll see in the next lap. And again, it's just using objects around the track as your braking point. But here, we're using uh, Marco's tip of slowing down and not pushing into the corner. So I try and slow down and let the car turn. But this is a constant fight against your brain, especially here at the hairpin, because it feels so slow. But you use Sidekick as the guide to say, actually, it isn't slow, it's much faster. Now again here, here's the two bits where I say about the angling. So I'm going to come in here, but I'm going to angle the car and then ease off the throttle to let the car turn in. I'm going to look for this 
sign here, although uh, I think I use the next sign actually and brake, but also angle my car in so I'm already turning before the corner so that I'm in the right shape and again here again. So I don't slide into the barrier, I shape the car and it gives me that extra room past the barrier to brake. But here is the big one that saved me the most time where I brake at the point of these poles or flags but I hold the brake and I hold the brake all the way because I've realised it slows me enough down and it's fighting that urge of the brain to want to keep going faster to um, do the fastest hot lap even though your brain is saying slow down, slow down, slow down. So it's that constant fight about where to go fast but where to go slow that makes up the whole lap. So let's look at my hot lap now. Okay folks, so I'm going to do it like a commentary where I commentate my top 10 hot laps. So I'm going to look for the curved building here, but more importantly, I'm going to shape the car, turn it in a little bit so that I'm at the correct angle and look at the um, side kick already up because of that angle that I've come in much better. So you look for breaking points here, and I haven't worked that quite out yet, but here, more importantly, I take my time. Use Marco's tip, don't push, especially down here in the hairpin. Relax, just take it easy. Uh, it, you're fighting the brain to be slow, but it's actually quicker. And again, taking my time around the curve. Now, see how I'm up again, or, or just level with it by not pushing. So again, here again, don't push, and that, that was pretty poor, but we're still up, and we're gaining again. So angle the car, ease it off and let it turn in but here especially so I look for the braking point here but as I come down I angle the car see so the car is already flowing out of the corner even before I get to the corner same here ignore the barrier and angle the car here so I look for this second set of poles I brake here but I hold the brake hold the brake hold the brake take Marco's tip and that way I'm not pushing out of the corner and losing time um, although it wasn't done as well you can see I'm losing time here but I still get a new personal best and I know already that I can do much much better just based on using either the ghost car or that sidekick app that shows you if you're up or down at certain points with the arrow down there you can see the red arrow down uh, up or down so it's showing me I'm down on the next lap of course and just using that to improve your overall hot lap so I hope that helped um, just try and watch as many channels as you possibly can just to get bits of information that hopefully will make you a better driver and let's finally look at this beautiful Lotus 49 one of the best cars in my opinion in the game and um, fantastic vehicle it is so as I look around this beautiful engine, I'll get in the car now and uh, I'll wave to the crowd. Thanks for watching. This is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. See you later.